Have you ever wanted to make a game all by yourself? This is something that more and more people are becoming interested in, and the resources out there have never been more abundant. It was four or five years ago that I decided that I wanted to make a game all by myself, and so I did. And then I made another one, and then I made another one, and then I made another one. And now, I'm a full-time game developer. Making a game is an incredibly fun and arduous experience, but making a game all by yourself is completely unique. Something that you'll find is that once you learn to make games, it's actually much more fun to make them than it is to play them. For one, you have to wear a bunch of different hats. You have to be a programmer, not necessarily coding, but implementing game logic, an artist, a producer, a designer, a sound effects artist, an animator, and so on. But that's what makes it fun. You have complete creative control over your game. Now let me talk about why I bring all this up. I recently picked up this book called How to Make a Game All by Yourself by Matt Hackett. It's a small book filled with deep truths, quirky comics, and powerful quotes that apply directly to game development. Now this video isn't sponsored or anything. I just recently read it and thought that there are some very good talking points worth bringing up. It's about 200 pages long, but it's an easy and fun read. I want to talk about some of the stuff it goes over because I found it helpful for myself, and I think some of this stuff would really benefit you if you're looking into diving into game development. A quick bio about the author. He sold over 50,000 copies of his own games and worked on other games that have been played by millions of people, so he knows what he's talking about. This book welcomes those with absolutely zero experience and maybe just a vague interest in game development. But as an experienced game developer myself, I also found it helpful and incredibly motivating. The book covers topics that range from learning to scratch your creative itch to how to pick which game engine to use. There are so many helpful tips about managing scope and how to ensure the game you make is actually fun. So I want to use this book as a springboard to talk about some of the most important subjects when it comes to making games as a solo developer. Making a game all by yourself can be summed up into four simple steps. Simple, but not easy. Learn the tech, design a tiny game that you love, prototype it, and ship it. It is very helpful to get you into a healthy mindset with realistic expectations to carry you through the whole process of making a game. Because making a game by yourself is not just a technical and artistic challenge, it's a mental challenge too. One of the major things that I want to highlight is also something that is echoed in this book, and it's this. Do not make a game in order to get rich. There are so many ways to try to make money on the internet, and making a game by yourself is not the easiest or most lucrative path. Trust me, for every story you've heard of a single person becoming an overnight millionaire by making a game, there's millions of other stories that have much more tragic endings. Pursue game development if you think it will be fun, if you want to express yourself creatively, and if you want a challenge. Now back to the hats thing. When it comes to making a game by yourself, you have to realize that you are the producer. You can't just be an artist. You can't just be a programmer. Your number one priority is to make sure that this game gets built and shipped. And in the very first chapter of the book, the author addresses the single most difficult aspect about making games by yourself. And that's the mental gymnastics you have to do in order to keep yourself motivated. Imposter syndrome is your main foe, and it's a very intimidating enemy if you're just starting out. But there are many things you can do to combat it. The book talks about some ways to keep your morale up throughout the game creation process. And this starts by doing what the author calls finding your fire. This means figuring out what fuels you. And it's important because it will be vital to getting you to the finish line. And part of that is making sure that you pursue projects that interest you. Now, what about the skills and the tools for actually making a game? Well, in my opinion, those are not nearly as important as the subjects of motivation and mental health, but this book covers it all. There's a chapter on the building blocks of video games, including tips for how to finish your game faster and smarter. For example, use simple aesthetics. There's a chapter on picking a game engine, which is one of the most intimidating bits of getting started with game development. But I can tell you from personal experience, I've used three or four different engines, and it's not as intimidating as you would think. I think the book ultimately recommends you try some out and see which one seems most intuitive to you. As long as it has a lot of online resources, it should be relatively easy to learn. Now, one of the best sections in the book, in my opinion, was centered on finding the fun in your game and making sure that you are making the game that you want to play. 
Let me read this quote from the book because it's so good. I guess I should actually get the book for that. All right, hold please. Make your game opinionated and let yourself really come out. Speak loudly and pick a clear lane. The game should scream you. It's your home, your happy place. If you nurture your game in this way, you can create a delicious creative cycle. And there's a lot more good stuff there, but I don't have all day. So I'm gonna move on to the logistics of finishing a game by yourself. And the biggest thing here is managing your scope. Do not make an MMO. Do not make an online multiplayer game. Do not make your dream game yet. Come up with a very, very simple game design. Then cut that idea in half. Then cut that idea in half again. Finishing projects sometimes means killing your darlings and managing tasks. But the author had some good tips for this as well. One that I particularly liked was to write down ideas for additional features for your game and consider putting them into a sequel for your game. The last stretch to the finish line will always take longer than you want. The last 10% of the project might take 90% of your time. The book comes with a shipping checklist that you can go through to make sure that you don't miss any of the important stuff that you need to get your game out there. Some of that includes creating a press kit and getting an idea for the different marketing resources you may want to create, and to be prepared with an elevator pitch to give people a quick idea about what your game is about. All in all, I very much enjoyed reading this book, and I would easily recommend it to anyone who is interested in getting started in game development. It does a fantastic job of setting realistic expectations and giving the reader an enormous boost of motivational energy to propel you headfirst into your project. I'll post a link to the book if you want to check it out. If you want to give it a read, I might recommend taking your time, maybe just reading two or three pages in the morning so you have time to digest it. I read it kind of quickly, and I think I would have benefited from a longer read through. I give How to Make a Game All By Yourself 9 out of 10 stars. <clears throat> oh, shoot. I give How to Make a Video Game All By Yourself 9 out of 10 stars. <laughs>